Okay, so, so for the last uh, few months, you have heard the story about gambling that is in critical need of assistance from us, Albany Tiffany Miller, gambler. And if you have heard Tiffany's story and shared with you, you might recall that uh, by August 1, uh, we needed to find a place, she needed to find a place in which to live. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that the uh, place has been secured, the lease has been signed, and Tiffany now has the keys. And she will be moving in uh, next Sunday. So at this time, I'd like to invite Bob Shore to come up, because for the last few months, Bob has been leading a committee I call the All-Star Team. Uh, to help find and secure a place for Tiffany. So, Bob, would you just share with us who your committee was? Yeah, good, Bill. Uh, a great committee, and everybody worked very hard. Uh, I know a couple of folks are not here today, but in, uh, on the committee were Sarah Chambers, would you wave your hand if you're here? Uh, Pete Kristoff, Brian Ely, Steve Henley. Ron Heskin, Steve Martin, Nate Skull, Patty Starlin, and Mark Sue. Okay, so if you recognize the names on there, you understand why I call it an all-star committee. And these people have worked uh, under Bob's leadership extremely hard for these last couple of months. Just to give you a quick overview, they had to of course, meet with Tiffany and her family to determine their needs. They had to form an LLC, which I call just takes care of the legal side of stuff. They had to basically every day for the last few months research to see if places came online that fit their needs, and the budget, and the location. And then they went through this laborious process of filling in applications after applications after applications, oftentimes to find out that they were about 10th in line to find a place. Okay, so it was a long, laborious process. So Bob, the last question I'm going to ask you is, what pushed this over the line? Uh, Bill, it was two things. Line to having uh, the place that uh, we found for, uh, for uh, Tiffany and family. Uh, number one, if, and maybe the most important, was relationships. Uh, it turned out that uh, through Steve Tooby, we got in touch with a, a management company that heard the story about Tiffany and understood what we were trying to do and said, Oh, great, we have a house. The second piece was uh, the elders had authorized us to remove one element of the risk from the equation, which was uh, you know, paying, paying of rent over the course of the year. The elders authorized us to uh, uh, say that we would pay one year's rent up front. So that took a lot of the risk out of the uh, whole uh, equation from a landlord standpoint, allowed them to focus on the really good thing that we were trying to do here. Okay, so on behalf of the elders and our entire church family, I want to thank you, Bob, for your leadership in this, and also to each of the team members, because they worked really, really hard I mean, on this. One thing that Bob just mentioned is that uh, we did approve one year's worth of funding, and we had said that the funding would come out, it's called the No Needy Person Fund. Now, we're going to talk, Austin's going to talk about that in just a second, because of paying for one full year, that no needy person fund is not only depleted, it is in the hole. <laughs> okay? So we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. At this point, Bob, thank you to you and your committee. Chapter 4, starting in verse 32, he writes this. All the 
believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them, because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. And then he gives two examples. One is of Barnabas, who later traveled with Paul. The Barnabas had a field, and he sold that and gave the money to uh, the believers who were in need. And then you have to understand the circumstances, then, especially if you were a Jew and you became a follower of Christ, your family disowned you, and you had nothing. You often lost your livelihood. You had nothing. Um, and then the, he gave an example of Ananias and Sapphira, who uh, sold some property, uh, which they didn't have to do. This was voluntary. This is not the early version of, of uh, socialism and communism. This is a voluntary thing that the believers did for each other. And they sold their property, and they lied to Peter about how much they sold it for, and held some back, and only, and only gave, donated some. They could have done that openly. They could have just given some and kept some. But they lied about it, and it was not a good ending for them. <laughs> and this is where what happened, well, how we started this fund is during the recession. Uh, some years ago, um, a number of our uh, people in our church here fell upon hard times, and no fault of their own. And so we got the idea of a no needy people. We would have a no needy person fund that, that y'all would donate to freely. Um, not tithes and offerings. This is totally separate from that. In order, because how did Jesus say that the world would know that we're his disciples? By our love for one another. Now, it doesn't stop the walls of the church. Obviously, that love and compassion goes beyond that. But it starts here. We are responsible for each other. Now, we don't usually judge your spirituality by whether you sell your house and donate. <laughs> um, this is totally voluntary, but the point is, is that there are people among us who are in need through no fault of their own. Now, some have gotten themselves into a fix, and it is their fault. We deal with it all. It's not free money. We do budgeting. We work on your lifestyle. Uh, if you're spending $150 a month for um, cable, well, there might be some, there might be $150 a month that you can scare up out of pay your bills. So this is a responsibility that we have for each other that we do. Well, the no needy person fund has been depleted because of the one time, big time need that we have. And so what we're asking for is that you love one another and show the world that you are Christ's disciples by loving one another. Austin is going to share about a particular instance of his life. Yeah, I just, I kind of wanted to relate it to being, well, we showed up here at this church during the recession. And uh, I, we've been a lot, part of a lot of churches. Sarah and I have, uh, moved here from Massachusetts, part of a church plant that was pretty young at the time, and we needed a lot of help then, too. We, uh, we gave our, you know, pretty much gave everything to move up to Massachusetts and, and serve the church there and it was a young, growing church and didn't have a no needy person fund but had a lot of love and I remember one time we opened up our home somehow we were able to get a home kind of like Tiffany's situation like there are no homes but God found this one um, and we didn't advertise our need we just we just made ourselves known and, uh, and then one day a uh, we came home, we lived on a really busy street with a lot of foot traffic and a lot of road traffic in a college town, and there was a thousand dollars cash just sitting on our front porch in an envelope but not sealed, and any kind of critter or person could have taken it. And we were so blessed. This is one of those things where it's like the exact amount you need at the right time and pay a certain bill. And just well, that was one of our many experiences as a married couple uh, with a lot of financial needs, realizing that God's people take care of each other, one way or the other. And then I thought, you know, that's not a really practical way to do shit, to just leave cash on people's front steps. And, and when we got to Foundry, like I said, we were in a lot of need. We, uh, it was recession, I was in the middle, I, I, mean, I was changing jobs at the time, I think. We, we didn't know what we were going to do, but we did know we wanted to adopt. And so there was a lot of financial need there, and we, were, we didn't know people well, and didn't, didn't want to ask, you know. Uh, so, 
Anyway, over the course of the years, being the recipients of a lot of generosity from this church, uh, and I've been able to see, especially from the elders' point of view, that this No Needy Person Fund is just such a great idea uh, that, that it's organized, so cash isn't blowing around people's yards. Uh, for the most part, it's organized. So Mark can talk more about that. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's an opportunity because God's people want to give to each other and want to experience that joy. You know, I was, I, uh, Philippians 4, right? Philippians 4, 13 is like the most used out context verse in the whole Bible. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. And I love that verse. But I was reading through that this week, and, it, and it's in the context of Paul needing money. And it's such a, it's such a neat thing because he's, he's describing how I know what it's like to, to have what I need, and I know what it's not like to, to be in need. And the, Philipp the Philippians were just so gracious to Paul and, and gave him the money he needed. And he was saying to them, you know, I, I'm content with Jesus. That's all I need. And that's kind of how, I mean, that is how Sarah and I have always felt. We're content with Jesus. We'll be poor with Jesus. We'll be rich with Jesus as long as we have Jesus. But what a blessing it is to be a part of a family that, first of all, knows I think the thing I want most in, in life is just to be known. To be known by God makes me feel really loved. And to be known by God. So I don't have to say, I had a rough week. Uh, I, I had a need. People just know me well enough to, to say, hey, you had a rough week. You had a need. And that's it's hard as a church to, to accomplish that with everybody. But we've been the recipients of that. In many ways, just, I don't know if the money's come from no needy family. I don't know where the money's come from. But we've gotten adoption grants over the years. Food, gifts, and, and Paul does call Philippians for us their sweet, fragrant offering or something like that. And we've gotten many fragrant, sweet, and yummy offerings from this church, especially when Joseph was going through all the surgeries, just meal after meal. I remember getting to the point where we were thinking, we're asking too much. I mean, I got a job I can provide for my family. Like, you know, I, I didn't want to be the, the, the man, the husband, and the father that doesn't provide for his family, right? That's kind of a thing we all men probably struggle with a little bit. Is, asking for help. And then I it just, it, you know, after time and prayer, realized that what a blessing it is to for you guys to give. To, we have so much Tupperware in our pantry from you guys. <laughs> we have so much. And I wash it, it might be music, because you don't want it back, apparently. But, uh, but every time I do that, every time I use these Tupperwares that don't match, I just think about this family and how generous and loving you have been to us. And it's, it's, it's a really joyful experience to be on both ends of that. I know what it's been like to be in need of help and to be able to give. And so, kind of like Paul, and it's been, it's been wonderful. And so I just wanted to give a little testimony, bear witness to, to what this, this plan to take care of each other looks like. This has been um, quite the journey. Um, God leading Tiffany and her family to this church family to our church family, and showing us that we can reach beyond what we normally do and be generous in ways that we haven't been before. I've been, I've been head of the No Need Person Ministry, I've been coordinator of the No Need Person Ministry um, for 12 years now, 11 or 12 years now. And let me tell you, this is the biggest thing we've ever done um, in recent time. Uh, one whole year's lease in Bend at current market rates, you know, was pushing $25,000. And that secures her a year, one year. And we did overspend, we did, we drove the No Need Person Fund well into the hole to do that. But I just wanted to, to come up here and share that this is just the first step. This is just the first step. We don't drop money on a problem and say, peace be with you. No, we're a family. And we need to come alongside each other and Tiffany and her five children um, in more ways than just that. So I've, I've outlined that Tiffany has three major needs. Housing is number one. You know, she was going to be homeless um, in a couple of weeks if we hadn't worked hard and if God hadn't given us the ability to do that. We bought some time. We bought a year. Um, what happens after that, Steve will talk about, we have some thoughts churning, we have some, some balls in motion uh, for, for long-term housing. Not just for her, but for all the other, but for other families that God brings us that might need this kind of help. Um, but housing is definitely niche. We have a one-year reprieve. Second, um, Tiffany never graduated high school. She has five children. She, she has a job, a full-time job, and she works part-time on the weekends, and she still can't 
put food on her family's table, even with free housing. There's the, the needs are just, the, the costs are just too great and her income is too low. So what we are committing to as a church is to walk alongside her, for not just for, for now, but for years to come, and giving her space to be able to find a way to get into a place where she can provide for her family. You know, that might be education, that might be job placement, or something like that. Um, but she, right now she has no breathing room, no wiggle room at all in her life, no margin. So we need to help in that way as well. So that's housing. Number two is income. The third one is probably the most important, community. Uh, we shared her story on Easter Sunday a couple months ago. But um, Tiffany and her, her children, her children are fatherless. You know, their, father was, their father's father figures were taken from them violently. They don't have community. They don't, they don't have relatives here. They don't, they're from a different culture. We are their family. We are, we, what, we are what they've got. So the committee that Bob named, those people, right, um, they're going to finish their work and their job is done. And we're going to be starting a new group, a ministry, a long-term ministry to just be a blessing to Tiffany. Help her, helping her in the areas that she might not even know about. Right? And so I know some of your committee members are interested in continuing on into that ministry. And we're inviting you guys as well. Um, you know, I don't even, I can't even imagine all the struggles and challenges that she has in her life, but I know that if I were alone with five kids in this place, I'd be a disaster. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, and, the, and, I, and I grew up here. I grew up in this country and I have an education. So, please put that in perspective, and I invite you to be a part, be a part, be a part of community with Tiffany. Reach out to her, love on her, um, connect with us as we put together a ministry for, to, to minister specifically to Tiffany and her family. So, we still need help on those areas. The other thing I want to talk about is that we have a place secured. Tiffany has not moved yet. She starts to box stuff up. She's going to be moving some stuff. Hopefully, it will be mostly done this week, all the little stuff. There will be some big pieces, you know, big furniture and stuff that she can't handle on her own. Um, her, her, her lease, her, her place that she's in now ends August 1st, but she has keys for her new place. This is what we're going to do. Next Sunday, the elders have decided, next Sunday, do you remember a few years ago when we used to do closed for service? Who remembers when we used to do closed for service? We would literally cancel the morning service and all break up and go out into the community, our downtown community, and do service projects for businesses and other, other churches and stuff in the area. Next Sunday, July 21st, is going to be similar. All right? We're going to meet here at 1015 like normal. We're going to sing a few songs. We're going to have a devotional thought. We're going to take the offering, because that's very important. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to end the service early, next Sunday. All right? Ending here, and reconvening at Tiffany's new place around lunchtime, noon, okay? And when we convene here, we're gonna, we're gonna grab some guys, say, grab, grab your trucks, grab your work gloves, we're gonna go to Redmond, pick up the heavy stuff, bring it to her new place, get her moved in, finish the job, and then we're gonna have a prayer and celebration service at her new place, and we're gonna bring pizza. Very important, pizza, awesome tip for the pizza. Okay, so next Sunday, here, and, you know, starting here, ending early, need workers to go to Redmond and back, and then we're going to convene at her new place, which is, what's the address? To Haviland Court, something like that? Yes, uh, 63125 to Haviland Court. 63125 to Haviland Court. We'll put that out. We have maps and stuff like that available for people next Sunday. All right? That's the plan next Sunday. We're very excited. We want to be able to celebrate and pray and bless Tiffany and her family as we complete this process. Amen? All right, Steve, just a little more info on what's the long-term picture, and then you can wrap it up. So this church is extraordinarily blessed, first of all, by all of you with, uh, that have exhibited over the years uh, huge hearts for helping in lots and lots of different ways. Uh, it's, uh, it's a blessing to be a part of this family. The other way that we're blessed is by having hard physical assets that we own free and clear. Not even church has a building that they don't have to pay rent on or, or they must be 
This is a huge blessing. It gives us flexibility and freedom to do a lot of things that maybe others are not able to do. And so, as elders, we try to figure out how are we using these assets for the highest and best use as God, as God, we think God is speaking to us. And one of the assets that we have is the vacant lot that's currently here. It's gravel that we use for parking. Um, and for really for several years, we've asked ourselves the question, is that really the highest, best use? That's a valuable piece of property, and um, should it be redirected? Is God telling us to do something else with it that might be more beneficial in some manner, shape, or form? Um, the Tiffany issue, uh, her struggle, has really brought this to light that how extraordinarily challenging housing is for people throughout this community, which includes a lot of people within this family. And so we are we're picking that up, that, that thought process of should we consider selling that property and in some manner, shape, or form using it to assist the housing needs for this family. So, so what we've done is we formed a small committee that has uh, met several times to explore, identify options, and do research to make, so we can make a recommendation to the elders as <coughs> if you were to sell it, here are the options, and, you know, what are the current market values, and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. There's there's many different options that we're, we've been going through, and I can't say that we know what the answer is yet. And so I don't want to go into a tremendous amount of detail because we don't know what that is. But I think it's important for you to know that we think it's extraordinarily important to make sure that we use all the assets that God has given us, that you have given us, that we try to use that responsibly, try to address current and future needs. And so if you can all be praying for us as we try to seek God's will in this, I think we'd all appreciate it. Thank you.
uh, as this committee, uh, thank you for this committee that, that, that worked so hard and they, they understated how hard they worked for uh, this housing. God, thank you for all of them and their willingness to work. And God, thank you for this other committee that's working on, on recommendations for the lot and, and what that looks like. Give us wisdom as we move forward. And, and give us unity as we move forward. God, we'll just, uh, uh, we look forward to what you're going to do. We thank you for what you've already done. And God, we, we, we're just blessed to be a part uh, of, of your family. And uh, God, we just uh, love you and thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I just want to really quick just say thanks, and I'm going to piggyback off of uh, off of what uh, everybody said there. Um, the uh, is my uh, PowerPoint on there? Um, I'm just going to go skip ahead because I think that I uh, I'm going to talk about this passage, but I don't like the title anymore. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> I just want to, I, I want to piggyback on what they said and, and let you know that this committee, the, the one that found the housing, worked extremely hard. I mean, put in all kinds of hours and, and, and looked at, I can't imagine how many places. And, 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 and everything seemed like it was falling through and it looked like we might have to go a different route and we were talking about some, some other things. And then as God always does, when he brought us to the place where we're like, God, whatever you want will do. And, and, and he opens our hearts. Then all of a sudden he says, okay, I needed you guys to get here. Now here's what's going to happen. It's, it's amazing how that works. It's beautiful how that works. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just amazing to, to, to watch how God works in our lives. And Paul, it, it's funny that Austin mentioned this passage because unless he's or something. I don't think he knew that I was going to do this, but, uh, uh, and if he is, he probably doesn't need to be an elder, but anyway, uh, so, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13, Paul says this, and I just want to, I just want to kind of wrap all this up. He said, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. And again, he's talking about in the context of, of them giving him a gift. And giving him, him a gift. Now, again, I also want to emphasize before I, I kind of close this down, I want to emphasize that we're not the only ones making the sacrifices here. You know, when we talk about Tiffany and her family, um, you know, they're relocating to here. They agreed to that, to relocate to Bend. They were settled in Redmond, and, and so there's a lot of that. And I, I don't think Allie's here, which is good, I think. Is Allie here? Okay, so um, Allie had just gotten a dog, and Allie loves animals. I mean, I, you guys remember his bird at family camp? The bird never came back from family camp. It, it, it's still a family camp as far as we know. Uh, I'm sure it's nice and healthy, but it's still there. Uh, but but uh, he got a dog, and he loves, loved that dog. And part of this lease agreement was hard on having a dog, and the potential for great expense was fairly high with having a dog. And so Allie, after a few people sat down, the committee sat down and talked with him about it, he willingly gave up his dog for his family. And I, I think that's, 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 that's sacrifice. That's every bit as much of a sacrifice as us, if not more, than what we've done. So it goes both ways, and it's just, it's just, it's just a beautiful story of how God gets us all to the place where we need to be, so that He can give us exactly what He has for us. And oftentimes, if not every time, what we think we want is nowhere near as beautiful and as big and as awesome as what God wants for us. But He's got to get us there first. So Paul says. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Paul was a, a, a traveling missionary, and he had needs. and he uh, Sometimes he had stuff, sometimes he didn't. He didn't have a house that we know of when he was traveling. He didn't have, uh, he depended on the Lord. And people's generosity... And, and the Philippian church was very generous to him, and he's talking about this whole process. He said, I am not saying this because I am in need. Which 
interesting because clearly he was what we would call in need. He said, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. That is a great place to be. To learn to be content. To learn to be... And I'm trying to like think of how do you define being content. And the best way I can think of it in my uh, fairly limited ability to do such a thing is, is this. It's, it's the idea that in the things that we cannot control, which really we can't control anything, then the things which are outside of our abilities and the circumstances that come into our lives, to have within us, deep within us, an abiding trust that God has this, loves us, and knows exactly what we need. So that when those things come up, we say, okay, this changed my plans. This changed my outlook. This may have changed my life expectancy, but it's okay because God has it. And I'm okay with that. We can honestly say that. And I, I, I love talking about contentment because I need it so much. I'm not great at this. I'm not even good at this. But Paul said, I, I am not saying because I have a need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. Some of you right now are in a situation in your life where you have great need. Maybe it's your fault, maybe not, it doesn't matter. At this point in time, you're in a situation where you have great need. Some of you are in a situation maybe you used to have great need, but God has turned that around and now you have plenty. It's the same God. But we have the same heart needs that we always have, whether we have a lot or we have a little, and that's Jesus. He said, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. In everything. I know the secret, he said. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So, we talk about what is the secret of contentment. What is it to be, to be satisfied in Christ, regardless of our circumstances. And it's this idea that God loves us and what He has for us and what He's planning for us is greater and better and much more than we could ever have and provide for ourselves. So what I mean by that, my one and only great story about contentment I'm not a real content guy, but I have to learn these lessons as we go, you know. Uh, I, 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 I struggle with it. But my one story about contentment, you guys have probably heard it, because, again, uh, limited. All right, so, but when, I, when we were uh, in Hermiston, about 2012, 2011, I got the itch to leave. I got the itch to do something else. I wanted to look somewhere else and go somewhere else. And I, I thought I knew what I, I wanted and what I needed. And so what I did was I, I, I applied for a bunch of jobs, a bunch of church jobs, churchchaffing.com. Interested? And um, the, uh, I applied for a bunch of jobs. I called CB Northwest. And if some of you have done that process, and, and you can put in your application there for, I think, $49.95, and they'll uh, take it, and they'll send it out to churches. If there's a need that arises, they'll send that out. And boom, you can get a job, and it'll be amazing. You'll be content. And now, uh, not necessarily true. But I always felt like the grass was going to be greener, right? And if you live in Hermiston, it's true, because every blade of grass is brown in Hermiston. So it's, it's, actually, it's like literally true that the grass is greener just about anywhere else. Now, I tried to find it. I did everything I could in my ability. Now, bear in mind, I, I didn't want to tell you guys this when I was interviewing, but I don't have much of an education. I, I, I've got one. It's from an independent fundamental Baptist college that's not accredited. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, so... Uh, it's been five years. I hope everybody's cool with it by now. now but, but, but for some reason, that wasn't pinging on anybody's radar screen. And I was doing everything I could, and I finally got an interview. And, and I'm like, okay, 
I went and interviewed, and it just, I didn't like it, or I didn't think it worked, and Joy didn't like it, and I would get a call here and have a phone interview, and didn't like it, and uh, or, or they didn't like us, or they never got a call back, and I did everything I could for about a year period to get out of Hermiston, and I couldn't. I couldn't. Through no fault of my own was I still there. That I was still there. Joy and I, someone gave it, much like this $1,000 cash. And by the way, next time I give you $1,000, I'll do it a little differently. But, uh, uh, so, like that thousand, someone gave us a, a, a cabin. They gave us a cabin in Vail, Colorado. Somebody came up and said, hey, we got a friend that's got a cabin in Vail, Colorado. How would you like that for a week? I'll take it. So we went up, we drove up to Vail, Colorado. Joy and I, we never do this. We never read books together. I, we just don't have the same kind of, you know, we don't, she likes like those romance novels, you know? Do you have anybody like that stuff? She likes a Christian romance novel. She keeps the library hopping with that. But uh, I, I, I like TV. So anyway, we just don't have the same But anyway, 
But I called, and Steve answered the phone. I was like, look, I, I, I just want to be honest. In the interest of full disclosure, we're not looking. I don't know how the information got sent to you. My apologies for that. Um, but here's what's going on. And he's like, oh, okay, I appreciate it. I don't know what the process is, but thank you for calling. So, did all that. And then um, Steve called back the next day and said, well, I heard that, but I didn't care if you were interested or not. <laughs> And you know what? But it was really cool because I said, you know what? I had nothing to do with this. This was not me. And so I was able to say, and just, just truthfully, I'm as interested as you are. If you guys get through there and you get through all those applicants that you no doubt have, and you still are interested, I'm interested. Because I had nothing to do with it. And a long story short, through that process, God brought us here. And little did we know, but... It's not so much you needed us. You were healthy. You were doing great. Al and, and, and Mike Coggle had this place running, and it was smooth as silk, and it was healthy, and you guys were great, and you guys were already doing most of the stuff. I've added very little. But anyway, uh, except looks. I've added a lot of good looks, but other than that. And, 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 but, but you guys were healthy. And, 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 and it was amazing because, you know what? It turned out you guys were exactly what we were. Hopefully we can give a little bit back of that. And we give a little bit back. Hopefully that's the case. But the beautiful thing was, and it's not because I'm super spiritual, because this is not. But, but God, through His grace, He's gracious. It's not about my ability to be spiritual. It's about His abundant and matchless grace. Through His abundant matchless grace. He took us on a journey and brought us to the place where we were perfectly content where we were. And, and I thought I knew what we needed, but God said, no, 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 I've got something better for you, but first I need you here. And he got us content. And he's like, okay, now I've got something that you really need that's going to help you, that's going to grow you, that's going to stretch you. And he brought us. That's, my, that, that, that's what I think it has to be, this story with Tiffany with what we're doing with the no needy fund and all that. Oftentimes we look at it like we're the ones making the sacrifice. But there, it goes every which way. Because God, through all this sacrifice, through all these things that we're doing, is bringing us to the place where we are content, where we're able to say, you know what, God, I know you're in control. Whatever comes our way, whatever happens, and, and, and that story is true for us, that story is true for Tiffany, God's working on us in that way to bring us all together as we do these different things and work in these different ways to bring us together so that we all, in unison, whether we're living in need, whether we're living in plenty, can say, we we know the secret of being content, and that's we can do all this through Him who strengthens us. And He gets us right where He needs us to be so He can give us gifts greater than we could ever dream. Amen? Amen. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this journey. God, thank you for this opportunity that we have to just walk this road together. God, as, 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 as we can testify to, to your, your grace as you bring contentment to our hearts and what that unleashes and, 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 and you gifting us things that, that we certainly don't deserve. God, bring us together in unity under the one voice that, that we can do all these things through you who strengthens us as we move forward and, 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 and help others and get help that we need and, and as we are able to, to give from our gifts and talents and we receive so much more back from your grace and your goodness. God, the No Needy Fund needs re-kickstart. But God, we know that you can do it. God, there are people that are going to come into our church that, that we just scratch our heads not knowing how we can help because the needs seem so big. But God, you are big enough. And you're working in their lives and you're working in our lives. You're stretching all of us to bring us to the place of contentment so that you can lavish your gifts on us because you're a good, good Father. So God, help us to go out, bring a measure of contentment to our lives so that we can know deep down in our soul that your God, your great, and your gifts are beyond anything 
that we can ever dream. So that what we dream for ourselves pales in comparison with what you have planned for us. Help us to know that. Help us to march out in that. And help us to be sure in that. And we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name.